It's an old little town of 300 people that had a college there 100 years ago, but the college moved off, and it kind of died down when the railroad moved. And what was it that pushed you to plop yourself in the middle of nowhere? I had spent some maybe six to nine months there in 1996 when I had a bit of a crisis of faith. That's what led me to that place, and I uh, eventually started playing music full-time and started my old band, Lift to Experience, and we toured around quite a bit in 2001, and after that, I wanted to get out of the Metroplex, uh, Denton, Dallas-Fort Worth. It's one big uh, concrete jungle now. I-, I wanted to get back toward what I was familiar with, which is just land. So I had $10,000 from the band, and I bought a house, and I've used it as a storage place ever since, mainly to keep my records, and actual records and metaphorical ones, but... And it's kind of like a storage space for yourself as well, right? Yeah, I uh, I tend to do two-year to two-and-a-half-year stints out there. When I first moved out there, I completely cut myself off. There was no Internet or anything, of course, in that in the town then, and cut off the phone and all that other stuff and removed myself from everything I had known and then stayed there for a couple of years, just reading and writing and digging into the inward journey of the self a little crazy there and I'd, I'd go for a month without leaving the village and even then it would just be to go to town for supplies doing odd jobs for the old people and things just to pay for the electric and I do really good there up until the two years and then it, it, it becomes all that inward traveling becomes a real detriment it's become a little easier with technologies you know you can google yourself and you see that okay this actually happened but when I first moved out there all the locals thought I was running drugs or cooking meth. You know, I was in some band they'd never heard of. It took years to kind of assimilate even until they'd accept me as someone who lives out there. So, How does it serve you to isolate yourself like that? Like, how does it flow into your work when you do come to tour in the U.K. and live in Paris and live in Berlin? Man, I, I don't know if it, it if informs the work as much as I'd like. I know that it may be a detriment to that sort of thing. I've definitely not taken a really career path. I've only put out two records in my life. I think if anything, it's only served to destroy. But it definitely made, it makes you a better person and keeps you grounded and centered and appreciative and thankful. And my own personal dealings with just saying goodbye to this this older generation of the world, this dark ages that we've, we're shifting from, is we have this interconnectivity. And I, I felt that moving out there, even just... 15 years ago that it was really a bygone era that's completely disappearing in in our lifetime and our generation will become obsolete. And even feeling that shift every few years as I move out there, all the cowboys are online now. They're checking and affirming and and seeing how the grid is connected. I mean, kids now today, they'll never be lost again. They have a sense of where they are. They, They don't know north from south a crazy world we'll never say goodbye again we're connected for life you never know if you're not going to see someone you always know who's calling things that seem so slight but they really add up to this titanic shift in culture you know you always know who's knocking at the door my own just being out there is a sense of loss for this the romance and mystery the things that i really held important as a kid and lived for and worked toward artistically and it's almost just sort of being out there to grieve and experience the death rattles of the of the old age, of the old world, you know, before we completely slip into this world where everything is accounted for, everything's defined. What are your tips for, even tips for yourself, for surviving on your own, for being alone? Like, how do you just keep yourself from slipping over the edge when you're going through these intense periods of isolation? I've noticed now on my own, I do really well for two to three weeks, and then it starts to get a little too intense out there. You get more sensitive to uh, your surroundings. It seems like the spirits join together and you can feel the darkness uh, in greater forms and the light and you get so uh, in tune with your area. You, you can feel when somebody's walking up to the door without even being aware that you can hear them. It's, it's just more closer sense to animal, but I would just listen to your body and I get so much better work done. I'm not distracted, and that's mainly why I disappear out there into the woods. The work improves, and I'm reminded of uh, how brief life 
is here. It, it, it is a contradiction because you really should be out there living life. It's hard coming and going both ways, and I, really, I honestly don't know if it served me better or worse. I, at times, I, I think it's the worst decision I ever made in my life moving out there, but I definitely know it's made me a better person. Just to touch lightly again on that, it's hard going between the two. Even now, just having a conversation with you on the phone, it feels like you're in some alternate universe that anyone would be interested in this at all. Playing that show in London, oof, the last few years out in a little village, you get the old people, there's 15, 20 of them, and then you, you're in some other parallel universe where there's a thousand people there who seem genuinely excited to see you, you know, and it's an encouragement, but... You end up home alone in a hotel room or wherever. And I'm not sure that any of that happened at all. But It's almost like you're an astronaut circling the planets in your little capsule. It feels like that. It really does. And I'm hoping my years out in solitude is, are coming to a close. Just as I've turned 40 last year. and since, I mean, years of my life in solitude. Just years, you know, even just hitting the road and touring. I feel like I'm when I'm playing in front of people like you're doing what you were meant to be doing, and like you're where the universe wants you in this brief time that we we have here. Uh, are we going to see an overcorrection, Josh? Are you going to go like the other end, like totally hedonistic and rock and roll? And Well, I don't know. Maybe. God, I hope so. That'd be nice. It'd be funny. My friend keeps joking. I've been having a, I don't know, normal midlife stuff lately, and I grew up pretty super conservative in the South, so I didn't. There wasn't a lot of gallivanting then in my 20s, so now I've, I've thrown off a lot of those shackles. I, he keeps teasing me that, Pearson, you're just living out your 20s, man. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see what happens. I've written some good songs in the last couple of years. After a mm, year and a half, two years of being out there, I started going to Austin and to a dance hall down there, two stepping, and just a fun folk dance we do and traditional dance and they play old country music and that's been a lot of fun sort of a revival in that if you imagine swing dancing but for country kids who are dressed really sharp and it's a real creative art form i've been doing that quite a bit and i've written a bunch of silly songs kind of celebrating the chase and are you intimating that we're going to hear a happy josh t pearson record god it'd be nice I, I've, I've definitely written some playful joyful raucousy kind of songs. I'll write what's in front of me, and the last decade or so, I'll just write and then throw it away, but I'm feeling a, a, a portion of my life who wants to leave more of a mark, kind of move from performance art more toward, I don't know, wanting to leave some. I'd like to have kids one day, all that stuff, and I'm definitely in a happier place, thank the good Lord, and I hope I don't have to uh, spend so much time thinking about myself. God, that'd be awesome. The unexamined life is not worth living. I mean, that's hit me as a kid, and it's absolutely true. But also, I would have to add to that the over-examined life is probably not worth living either. So uh, I think that's where I'm at right now. I hope to get some of these songs finished up in the next year or two. I've got that stuff I'm working on, and these gospel tunes. We're singing these old hymns that we I grew up with, and then... Uh, these other songs about uh, modern technologies that are just infiltrating our society and our ways of life it makes it even harder to cope. But we'll see where it goes. That two-step and that dance has brought me more joy than anything in the last decade. I was never the a never dancer. You know, you grew up with it in Texas, but you you reject all that stuff. It was only the hillbillies that were into that, and at least Fort Worth. So uh, I've come back to it late in life, and it's kind of had this resurgence, and it's only the cool kids that are doing it. And, a real creative form, and man, it's a lot of fun because you mix partners. You, you just the girls are standing or in, the, in a line to dance, and you go up to whichever one you want and say, "May I have this dance?" You lead them around, they follow. There are rules, good, clean American fun, and then you take them back to where you pick them up and say, "Thank you very kindly." But I was never the guy to dance. I was always the cool guy in the corner. Uh, watching the bands. I never was into techno music or anything like that. I listened to electronic stuff, but it was way too cool to dance. Or insecure, I don't know, whichever you want to call it. Well, if I could ever just free dance, that'd be the ultimate goal, where you just start dancing to David Bowie or something. I'm not at that level yet. I have to have forms and patterns and stuff, but maybe one day I'll break through and move to Berlin and 
have the techno years, that would that would be a complete reinvention, which is exciting in ways, transcendent, killing off the old idols, all that stuff. It's killing off old idols, death and rebirth, but it's also arrested development, which is also fun. Arrested development completely, but man, it could be worse. It's nice to fellowship a little bit on the more joyous sides instead of the deep reflective introspection, but we'll see where it goes. Sure. Upper midlife crisis stuff. It's great. Youth is wasted on the young anyway, including their lifestyle. Amen. I have no idea. Well, Josh, thank you so much for squeezing me in. God, thank you. I'm glad I could fit.